Good evening. In today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving that set union distributes over set intersection in the same way that multiplication distributes over addition. And you're probably already familiar with that distributive property. Remember that A times B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C the multiplication distributes over the addition. Set union works the same way with set intersection. That's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. So let's just be precise and write down exactly the set equality that we're proving. We're proving that for three sets, A, B, and C, A union the intersection of B and C, so A union B intersect C is equal to a union B intersect A union C. So we see that the set union distributes over the set intersection. We'll be proving this set equality today. Remember that in order to do that, by definition of set equality, we have to prove that this set is a subset of this set, and then we have to prove that this set is a subset of this set. If we can do that, we will have proven this set equality. As it turns out, set intersection also distributes over set union in this same sort of way. We proved that in the previous lesson, so I'll leave a link to that proof down in the description in case you haven't seen it. That proof and this one are both pretty straightforward, so I recommend giving them both a try yourself before watching the lessons. All right, quickly, before we get into the proof, let's just kind of see why this is true with Venn diagrams. So we'll use three circles to represent our sets. We'll say that's A, that's B, that's C. What is A union B intersect C? Well, B intersect C is just what B and C have in common, this part here. And then if we union that with A, that just throws in all of A as well. So that is A union B intersect C. Is that the same as A union B intersect A union C? Well, A union B is just all of A and all of B. A union C is just all of A and all of C. So if we intersect those, we're gonna get all of A and we're gonna get what B and C have in common, which is exactly what we have shaded here. So pretty clearly with the diagram, they are equal. But maybe you're not convinced, so let's just go ahead and get into the proof. For starters, we'll prove that this set is a subset of this one. In order to do that, we need to take an arbitrary element from A union B intersect C and show that element must also belong to this set over here. So that's what we'll say. We'll say let X be an element of A union B intersect C, just taking some arbitrary element from our set on the left. Okay, now we can basically break this into two cases. Since X is an element of this set, that means that X is in A or X is in B intersect C. So we'll address those possibilities separately. It could also be the case that X is in A and X is in B intersect C, but if so, then that is covered by the two separate cases that we're gonna go over. So we'll say here's case one. Suppose that X is an element of A. We know that X belongs to this union. Suppose it belongs to A. What does that mean? Well, by definition of set union, if X is an element of A, it must be the case that X is an element of A union B. That just follows, again, from the definition of set union. However, since X is in A, that also, mean, that also means that X belongs to A union C. And again, that's by definition of set union. Since X belongs to A, it also belongs to A union C. So we see that X is an element of A union B and X is an element of A union C if X is an element of A. Thus, we get our desired result by definition of set intersection, X is an element of A union B intersect A union C. All right, so that's case one. We see if X is an element of A, that forces X to be an element of A union B intersect A union C. Then case two, 
is the other possibility. X could be an element of A, or maybe X is an element of B intersect C. And again, remember, if X belongs to A and B intersect C, that case is covered by case one, and it's covered by case two. All right, so what does it mean if X is an element of B intersect C? Well, certainly, that means that X is an element of B by definition of set intersection, and it means that X is an element of C. Then, by definition of set union, if X is an element of B, we know that X is an element of A union B. That set there. Similarly, by definition of set union, if X is an element of C, we know that X has to be an element of A union C. X is an element of A union C. And so, again, we have our desired result. If X belongs to B intersect C, then we know X is an element of A union B, and we know that X is an element of A union C. So, in total, by definition of set intersection, this means that X is an element of A union B, intersect A union C. Thus, we've shown between these two cases that if X is an element of A union B intersect C, then it must also be an element of A union B intersect A union C. So we've shown every element of this set is also an element of this set. Thus, we have proven our desired subset relation that A union B intersect C has to be a subset of A union B intersect A union C. So then, to complete our proof, all we need to do now is show that this set is also a subset of this set, and that will complete our proof of this set equality. All right, I erased what we had on the board so that we got some more room to work with. Just rewind if you need to take another look at what we were previously discussing. Now, again, we want to show that this set is a subset of this set. So we begin by taking an arbitrary element of our set on the right. So let X be an element of A union B intersect a union C, we just need to show that any such element must also belong to A union B intersect C. Okay, so what does it mean if X is an element of A union B intersect A union C? Well, X belonging to A union B means that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. Since X is an element of A union B intersect A union C, we know that X belongs to this set and X belongs to this set by definition of set intersection. So X belonging to this set means that X is in A or X is in B. But again, by definition of set intersection, we also know that X is an element of A union C. So we know, and since X is an element of A union C, that means that X is an element of A or X is an element of C. So this statement is addressing the fact that X is an element of A union B. This statement is a restatement of the fact that X is an element of A union C. Again, we know X is in both of these sets because X is in their intersection. All right, then this might look a little complicated, but it actually breaks down into two very simple cases. If X is an element of A, then certainly by definition of set union, X is an element of A union B intersect C. If X is an element of A, then it has to be in this set as well. So what if X is not an element of A? Well, if X is not an element of A, X must belong to B and X must belong to C because both of these or statements have to be true. So again, if X is in A, then it's obvious that X is in this set. If X isn't in A, then these other parts of the or statements must be true because the or statements are true. So X would have to belong to B and X would have to belong to C, which would mean that X belongs to B intersect C. If X belongs to B intersect C, then by definition of set union, X belongs to A union B intersect C. 
So we see that actually breaks down into two very simple cases. Once more, if X belongs to A, obviously X belongs to this set that has A in the union. If X doesn't belong to A, then it has to belong to B and C, in which case it's an element of B intersect C, and thus again is an element of this union. Either way, we have our desired result that X has to be an element of A union B intersect C. So we've proven that any element of this set must also be an element of this set. Thus, by definition of subset, we know that A union B intersect A union C is a subset of A union B intersect C. It's very hot in this Halloween costume. There we go, that's it. So. In the first part, we proved that this is a subset of this. We just proved that this is a subset of that. Bada bing, bada boom, in total, that proves the set equality. Since both the sets are subsets of each other, they've gotta be equal sets. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that set union distributes over set intersection. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.